Um, uh, we can delete that part of this. <laughs> that's not to be put out there yet. Anyhow, um, and be a boy, by the way. Not, yes. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> yes. Okay. So. Welcome to another episode of The Family Business with the Alessis. And today, because family is everybody's business, mm -hmm. I'm joined at the podcast table with Rochelle Alessi. Yes. Hello, everybody. And Christopher John Alessi. Good Give to be here. them a hand and round of applause. Wow, look at here. And because it's going to get hot in here. Oof. Yeah, we brought some flames. There's going to be some good, hot, juicy conversation going on. <laughs> Actually, we're here talking about um, your first year of marriage. Mm. You're a year and a half into this thing. Yes. Closer well, to two. Yeah, closer to two. February will be two. My gosh. I know. Time has flown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When's the last time Rochelle been in the podcast booth? Was it when? No, you did a second one. Yeah, I think it was one with the with everybody, the girls. We were talking about Thanksgiving. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so over a year ago? Yes. Wow. So that would have been like season two or three. So you, that was a good one, by the way, on Thanksgiving. Yes. Yes. Season three. Season three. Mm -hmm. So, so cool. yeah, if you're watching us, listening to us, as our audience does, uh, you may want to go back and subscribe. If you didn't get that episode, you would have been able to hear from uh, Rochelle and the girls are her sister-in-laws yes. and talking about Thanksgiving and all good things. So go back and subscribe to the podcast and you'll be able to pick up on some of those older episodes, which man, I can't believe we four seasons in life's good, but look, your first couple of years of marriage. Um, what do you think? How's it going, Rochelle? I think it's going great. It's going really good. Yeah. We definitely have learned a lot about each other and um, just everything in life, but it's been great. Yeah. We've had a great time. Really? I would say, yeah. So you have your own house. Yes. You like that? I love that. Really? Yes. I think um, we've ha having to work together to put a house and you have different opinions, mm -hmm. you like different things. And trying to bring all that together and find a common ground, it's been the best because it really is our home. Yeah. So that's been a great experience. Mm -hmm. And a guy needs to realize that his newly wife that he brings in to his life is going to want a home. Yes. She he Of her own. Yeah. <laughs> Not living with the in-laws, huh? Yes. <laughs> it's a big deal? Yeah. Wow. I love having our own home. Yeah. It's great. Big question. Tell me. Is Christopher clean? Yes. He is? He is. He's perfect because in the areas that he's very clean, I'm not. And in the areas that I'm very clean, he's not. So it's like a perfect balance oh, in the he, house. I'm yes. surprised he didn't jump right in there and try to defend you. No, she's not, not clean. <laughs> All right, Chris, my son, my only son. What do you think? Well, Almost since, two years into this. Since you did say it was going to get a little hot and spicy. I'll tell the story that I've been very recently to describe oh, how marriage has been. It's been amazing. It's the way that God intended life to be for sure. But very recently, I, uh, I was a little sharp with Rochelle. And I was just focused on other things. I had just jumped back on our, our eating program. So I was a little cranky. And I came into her real quick and I said, hey, I just want to apologize. I, I was not trying to be uh, sharp or mad. I, I wasn't mad at you. I'm so sorry. And she was like, oh. You know, I didn't even think anything of it. I, I, whatever. Of all the times that I've been mad at you without you knowing, this wasn't one of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I said, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And then wait. he went on, how many times have you been mad at me that I didn't know? I'm like, I don't know, just a few times. I don't remember them, but I know if they Once have happened. <laughs> Not too bad. And I'm thinking, I thought, my head, if you would have asked me five minutes before that interaction, have you ever made Rochelle angry? I'd say, oh, maybe once. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I guess not. A few times. <laughs> and one of those happened to be... I was going to say, maybe we could get into what one of those times would have well, been. Well, this is a great example of who's clean, who's messy, the different people, having your own home, all that good stuff. Um, as you know, Rochelle and I are into gardening. Mm -hmm. We really enjoy it. Uh, 
I've gotten a little too much into it. Now it's kind of taken over our entire backyard. Used to be a section. Now the seating area is a section. Everything else is plants and gardens. Uh, so one day, we had a Saturday. I spent about four hours out there. No way. Consolidating, cleaning things, making things look better, putting them in bigger pots, getting things off the ground. I spent a lot of time. I built some furniture that day to have stuff out there. And I'm finally wait, done. I'm wait, exhausted. You built something? I've, I built... I Do you use tools? I, yeah, of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's amazing. So doing all this stuff. And Rochelle had been inside. Uh, that day she hadn't been feeling very good. So she was really relaxing most of the day. And I you know, totally like it. I liked what I was doing too. But I'm exhausted. I'm, I'm sweating. I'm dirty. I picked everything up. And I had taken two now empty pots. <laughs> and I had just left them by the entrance uh you know, back into our house. I just left them there because I was like, tomorrow when I get back from church, I'm going to put pots in that. So I don't want to take them into the garage. They're kind of dirty anyways. And so I come inside. Rochelle's like, what'd you do? I tell her everything I did. And then she's like, well, please, please close, close the blinds. It's a mess out there. And I can't even see it. I don't even want to look at it right now. It's just so messy out there. <laughs> After four hours of work. Yes. <laughs> so what happened? So then I said that and Chris was like, well, hold on. <laughs> I've been out there for four hours, creating the space that you want, building furniture, moving things around so it's everything you want, and you are upset because two pods <laughs> are not in place. And I felt so bad because I'm like, he's right. I was making a big deal over two little pods because they're not in place. So I was getting a little uh, OCD because I'm like, it's not perfect. Mm. And so I was seeing two little things not in place. It didn't mean the whole place was a mess. It was just two things. Two things. But in my head, everything was a mess. So I felt so bad. I I apologize. I you said, know, I'm Rochelle, sorry. It was so yeah. funny. I think he's used to it though. Because <laughs> you are like his father. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For yes. someone so smart. <laughs> my gosh. My gosh. Let's major on the minors. The minors. <laughs> it was actually funny though, because we realized very quickly like, wow, we just, we have different definitions. Yeah. yeah. Like, to me, I go out there, because to those thinking, two pots, you know, well, out of four or five pots, that's like half the pots. We've got like 45 out yes, there. So for, Obsession. for so many to be in the right place and only two, it was funny. But at the same time, I had to understand that, you know, that's how she is. That's She wants to see things clean. So it makes total sense. But she does have her areas where she wants to be clean and areas where she could not care less. Yeah. And I happen to be, those are the areas that I care about. And I don't care about the others. We have found a great balance, and mm. and it's been really fun. You know, I got to say for for you guys and Moinas, you know, I'm proud of you for not renting a home, but going into marriage, knowing okay, from the get go, we're going to start letting our money work for us. We own our home, so you guys stepped into it, Chris. You saved your money. Uh, you were able to to buy your first place, and it just happens to be about five doors down from where Muinas live. So yes. that is like a dream come true to see this happening. And we only need two more of those units <laughs> for yes. when Gabby and Lauren get married. Another church member moved in too, into the area. That's right. So now there's, we're taking over. Caddy us. <laughs> so yes. you got them. You also have uh, Otto and uh, uh, Madeline. Madeline. Yes, mm -hmm. that's cool. You You've got some... Good neighbors there. It's, it's nice the best place. neighborhood, oh, too. Oh, gosh. Yeah. We were talking about Halloween for a minute with Steph and Weena telling the whole story about them pouring the wine <laughs> and the beer out, which is Oh, great. they told the story? Oh, oh I love it. Yeah. Our pot story is nothing compared yeah. to that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was great. And But yet the, the neighborhood, you guys, your neighborhood is so family friendly that they blocked off the street. They had a big event there just for Halloween. So that's a great little community you guys live in. Yeah. Tell, tell everyone about what you said to the grandmothers the other day about hearing kids. I love it because every afternoon when we get back home from work around 5.30 to 6.30, you hear the kids playing from the uh, playground. And then you know at that time you have to drive carefully because mm. there's kids on bikes, scooters. And I love that because it feels like a little hometown within our neighborhood. Yeah where you actually see kids playing outside yeah. and our neighbors are friendly. So yeah. from our couch, we hear it all. And Rochelle sees that as like, this oh, yeah. is why I love it. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm like, this is why we're going to move. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't want to keep hearing nap. so many people. <laughs> I know. No. You know that they finally opened that uh, little playground, huh? Yes, mm -hmm. they did. Took them. COVID took it for a while. Golly. But. No, it's a great little neighborhood. Love seeing you guys. 
Okay, biggest challenge you think your first year or so of marriage? What do you think that's been, Chris? Oh, I was gonna say you should go first. Okay, biggest challenge for me has probably been, I think I've said this before, uh, my unique role as the man of the house Mm -hmm. to know when to make things a big deal, when to not. So the way that I call it, the way I guess I've been describing it is, when do I, because I'm always the leader of the house. Right. When do I lead in a more aggressive way? Okay, no, those pots need to be moved. (laughs) Okay, no, it's been a week and a half and we haven't done this yet. Uh, Okay, no, that thought, we're not going to entertain that thought. Okay, we're not going to sit here and and just keep venting about this thing. When do I lead more aggressively? And when do I just lead with more patience? Mm -hmm. When do I just say it's not a big deal right now? Mm -hmm. You know, did... Give me an example. What, uh, what is not a big deal to lose your stuff over? Well, I tend to be somebody who I'm going to err on the side of making things not a big deal. Um, I just, I, I'm, I like conflict, but only when it's, I believe it's necessary. Um, but for instance, like for me as a, as a man, you know, before we found out about where we're at right now, um, there were, there were, there are things that are my chores and then there are things that are her chores. And I don't mind ever doing my chores. I like them. I do the dishes all the time. In fact, I kind of tell her, don't touch the dishes. I'll do them. Uh, Laundry is the same way. But there are sometimes, so her thing is like mopping and vacuuming. And there was a time where the house, I just felt like, you know, maybe we haven't cleaned enough. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, (laughs) do I want to sit here and make a deal out of it? Or do I just want to grab our vacuum? Our house is not that big anyways and just vacuum it up for her. Now, there wasn't a whole lot of deep thought into this. I'm not making a story out of what that wasn't. But it's just an example of, do I just want to do it myself? Good thing I did, by the way, because we ended up finding out, you know, why the house was a little bit messier and stuff. And um, But it was just more of, do I walk in and say, hey, this is something we need to address? Or is this just something I just got to do myself and not worry about it? Uh, other examples, you know, would be when maybe I am a little sharp with something towards her um, because of other things going on. You know, there are times where Rochelle will make the decision, I'm not going to make this personal, make it seem like that was, you know, aimed at me. She does that really well. I don't do that well. I feel like if you're, if you're spicy at all, I want to know what I did to cause that spice. <laughs> <laughs> and so I will come back, which means some of the times I expect apologies and it's, it's not You right. do? Well, it, not really. It depends. Does he have to have, hear the words sorry? Not often. Good. Not often. Yeah. No, but just sometimes... If it was reversed, if she had the tendency when she was stressed to be spicy like I do, mm-hmm. I would probably expect it differently. But she chooses, you know what, this is not a big deal. Right. And most of the time I come back and go, hey, I, I, that wasn't even directed at you. When she mm-hmm. could have been like, hey, you shouldn't have, you know. So they're just examples yeah. of. How about you, Rochelle? First year, biggest what, were your biggest cha- what was your biggest challenge, you think? I think is communication. Because mm-hmm. I've had to learn, because... I have a way that I think and I process, and I tend to think everybody thinks that way. And I've learned that he doesn't. He thinks very differently than me. He communicates very differently. So we've had to learn together that when in stressful moments or not stressful moments, how we're going to communicate and never assuming the worst because he'll get, it's the weirdest thing. We'll sit down and have a plan. We'll come up with the plan. We'll leave. And we have two completely different plans. <laughs> and I'm like, Chris, but we talked about this. We said we were going to do this, this, and that. And then he'll come back and say, no, I thought we were going to do this and this. <coughs> and I'm like, but we sat down and we talked about this. So now I've learned communication is so important because he doesn't think like I do and I don't think like he does. And that's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing because... I need him to think the way he does to lead our home. Mm -hmm. And I need to think the way I do to complement each other and help. Mm -hmm. And so the the past year has been a lot about learning each other's way of thinking, communicating, and never assuming the worst in the person. Mm. And that's helped because we do avoid little fights that could turn into something big Mm -hmm. by by just saying, okay, that's not what he meant. Let's just talk about it again. And learning now more how he thinks, it's become quicker when we're trying to, if we are in a little argument, I know, okay, he's just processing out loud. 
I'm just going to wait till the end. The <laughs> last five minutes is what he really means, not the first oh, 10. My, 10 or 15. <laughs> I have yeah. said things and followed them up immediately with, I didn't mean that. I don't even know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm just like, let him talk. Wow, you have Listen patience. Listen to the five, la the last five minutes. That's what he really means. And then when I've done that, I avoid getting mad or angry at the first 10 minutes because then I'll go in and be like, but you said this, and this, and this. Because mm -hmm. I'll remember everything because I'm a facts person. Chris is an overall picture. Mm -hmm. So we're learning in that way. <laughs> that's that's some real good <laughs> some real good tools right there. If you have somebody that processes out loud, mm -hmm. go mute Yes, for the first 10 or 15 minutes and then come off mute for the last few and yes. you're going to get the facts. Mm -hmm. That's really good. And then if you are that person that is on mute, you know that what they're saying on the front end isn't really what they mean. Yeah. Wow. We're just arriving processing at something. It. Yeah. I've learned he's just trying to get to a place and he's going to go through all these different thoughts, but then he'll arrive to the right one. Okay. Now, <laughs> does he do the same thing with you? Yes. Like the opposite. He's, he's yes, really opposite. good. Yeah. Because I tend to say, well, give me some time to think about oh, this. Gosh. When he's ready to just talk, I'm not. So he's, we've learned when there's times where I'm like, okay, I need to talk. I can't just be quiet and wait. But he's been really great at saying, okay, you can have your space, process what you're thinking, and then come back and tell me. So. Well, I'd, I'd say the that. opposite tool for me is to ask her questions mm -hmm. um, and very specific questions. So if we have some type of interaction with somebody that made us uncomfortable or we really liked or. Maybe we happen to hear something and I just happen to know that that's like a thing for her. And I'm wondering, is that connected to how you've been thinking or ask the question point blank? Hey, are you thinking about this? Or hey, uh, did that make you uncomfortable? Asking those questions and then shutting up and letting her talk. It's quite funny. I don't think there are mental processors. I just think there are people that don't enjoy talking about things until they've given some time to get past their anger and that's what i think rochelle will be because the minute yes. she starts talking when i ask those questions and i stay quiet she'll always answer with one or two words like a 30 second pause and then here comes some more <laughs> and i'm not like that there's no pauses but for her <laughs> um i have noticed that my questions help her make sense of what they are rather than me uh assuming i know what she's thinking because many times i'm i'm very wrong yeah where I'm thinking she's going to answer this way, and she doesn't. Mm. Um, and, you know, we found something, and I, I would love for you to expand on it, but we found that every single time we fought, every time, they've always come down to, I'm trying to release her from a burden that I think she's experiencing, and she's trying to release me from a burden that she thinks I'm experiencing. Mm. And so the fight eventually, that's how it starts, and then it becomes about something mean that we said. Come on. And it's like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. This started as I was trying to make you happy. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to, ha to help. That's like every fight we've had has been like, wait, mm -hmm. you were trying to help me. Yeah. I was trying to help you. Wow. And now we're fighting with each other. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I remember one day um, we, were, we were about to get married. And it was an afternoon and I wanted to do something. I had a plan. I wanted to go to Target. We were at that time buying some little things for the house. And Chris wanted to eat because he was hungry. Hungry. Starving. And so I learned that day that when he's really hungry, at least get him a snack before we do anything else. <laughs> the baby needs a little snack. <laughs> or everything will be ruined because he, he gets hungry. <laughs> yes. And so at that time, he was trying to say, no, 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 let's go do what you want to do. And I was trying to say, no, 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 let's go try to eat. So then we went and when we were eat, when we said, okay, let's go eat first, then it turned into, well, what do you want to eat? And then I was saying, well, you're the hungry one. So you pick where oh we want to eat. Here we go. We went back and forth <laughs> and ended up fighting for like 30 minutes in the car. Scream fighting. We don't have scream fights. And at the end, I'm like, okay, just drop me off. We, we don't have to do this today. 
I was done. And then I'm thinking, take me home. <laughs> take me home. And Chris is like, but I'm hungry. And Chris is hungry. And then, and then right around that time, you texted me saying, hey, we're having dinner over at the house. Do you guys want to come? Yes. <laughs> and so at that moment, we're fighting. And then Chris goes, okay, all right, stop, stop. Realize that we're fighting because I was trying to please you and you were trying to please me. So we were like right sitting in front of a restaurant, Bole. And we were like, it doesn't matter. Let's get off. Let's go eat. We ate. Within like 20 minutes, we were happy we're again. Oh Everything was fine. We yeah. went to Target. We even stopped by your house. Oh it was like a great gosh. night. But it was the, I was trying to please him and he was trying to please me. Yeah. We ended up fighting. Well, uh, not too long ago, uh, Rochelle, who usually is all dolled up in the morning when she heads out the door, makeup, hair, clothes, everything. You guys showed up at our house before work, about an hour before work, and you came in. And uh, when you first came in, you were not <laughs> like your usually morning dolled up self. And you came walking in with Chris. And what was what was all that about, Bob? So I told you guys that, you know, 99 times out of 100, Rochelle and I are on the same page. Uh, but whenever we get to that one, we've kind of noticed because of the guidance that you and mom have given both at church and in life, that we, we, we come to you for more guidance. And so this is one of those times. And then I threw uh, two pregnancy tests at you and yep. said, what do these mean? <laughs> yep. 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 Tears, joy, uh, just feeling um, the goodness of God, yeah. which brought on the tears. Cause it was like, are you kidding me? Everything is playing out the way it's supposed to. The way it's supposed to. Yes. The way it's supposed to. And so you have now, you are how far along? We are almost 12 weeks. Basically 12 weeks. Tomorrow yeah. makes 12 weeks. Okay, can I ask you this? Did y'all come up with this whole agreement that we're going to call it, we are pregnant? Because I just asked you, how far along are you, Rochelle? And you said, we are. <laughs> and I noticed, Chris, when you made the introduction to the church, we, we are, are pregnant. pregnant. So. Isn't that a thing? Am I, am I? I used to say I was pregnant, and then he would say we're pregnant. So I thought I had it wrong. <laughs> I, I thought it was. So a then I just started, had it wrong. I thought I had it wrong. So I just started saying what he said. I'm like, oh, so it's we. We. So it's we. We're pregnant. Well, here's what's hilarious. No, Chris is not pregnant. Trust no, I'm me. Not. He and is he's not the one throwing okay. up in the morning. Five years ago, this wouldn't have been a problem. It's a problem now because there are people who think that men can get pregnant. But it was not a problem no, five no, years ago. No, not any men we know. No. It was a a statement to say as a as a family unit we are expecting. So maybe that's what's better. I need to say we're expecting because you're the pregnant one. Is yes. pregnant. <laughs> so back to my question, Rochelle. Yes. How far along are you? I am almost twelve weeks. Wow. How yes. big is the little Alessi? The baby right now is the size of a little prune. Prune. Right? No, it's a strawberry. It's the the doctor told us yesterday four to five centimeters long. Oh. Okay, so that's, yeah. Uh, mm. Prunes, what did you say, strawberry? It's a strawberry. Must be a big strawberry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah big homestead strawberry, the ones yes. down south. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Well, we started with a, what? What was the first size? A P? A size of a, of a P. Mm -hmm. Since Chris and Rochelle are into plants and I'm gonna find that app that shows all you. of the fruit bearing plants, that's how we are determining the size. It was a pea. Mm -hmm. Then it went to a peanut. No. A blueberry. A blueberry. Yes. <laughs> so here. And, and then it went to a little olive. We olive. found out at six weeks. Started as a sweet pea. Then oh. it was then it was a blueberry. blueberry. Okay. Then raspberry. A raspberry. Then a green olive. <laughs> then a prune. <laughs> and this week it's a large strawberry. <laughs> May if it's she, always be approved until she's married. So that's good. Um, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. You went to the doctor this week and we got the pictures and um, you have t taken a blood test yeah. mm -hmm. to determine what the, uh, if there's any uh, disease or any issues there, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really checking the DNA strain already. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you will find out uh, around December, your birthday. Around my birthday, we should know the gender. You should know the gender. Are you going to tell everybody the gender? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we want to tell everybody. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we're going to have a gender reveal. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's cool. So for our podcast, our audience, uh, they will learn most likely next year. 
And yes. I guess next are, season, mm-hmm. next they season gotta watch. for the uh, fifth uh, season mm-hmm. of our episode. So that's really cool that we could share that. But, you know, it's interesting because as Instagram, social media uh, focus as you've been over the years, and Michelle, that's part of your job here yeah. as you handle all uh, things, social media account for the church and myself. So thank you for doing that. Um we realized about two weeks after we made the announcement, nobody put it on social media oh, yes. that you guys were pregnant. <laughs> we didn't. I didn't think about it. I guess when we told the church, yeah, that was like real for me. That's what made it like real life. Yeah, I didn't think about social media at all. Yeah, we, we, believe it or not, we've. If I wasn't authoring books or a pastor, I wouldn't even have it. I don't like it. She really doesn't like it. What? I think her last post social media? social media. Yeah, her last post was like for clickbait and then before that it was like june yeah and so we just were we we don't feel like that social media world is the public announcement anymore well can i tell you just that in itself shows how healthy the marriage is yeah because i know so many people that are either married or are not married they're single and that is their their sphere of influence in their friendship circle this false reality of social media so they're always on it or they're always needing to be posting on it to this supposed group of people that really don't know them. And the fact that we weren't even thinking about yeah. sharing <laughs> something so personal yeah. as this uh, says a lot about how healthy the marriage relationship mm-hmm. is. The worst thing, not to go on a rabbit trail here, for me is to sit in a room with people of people and all of them being on their cell phone while we're present with each other, we're also not because we're following, checking on people that are doing this, that, or the other hundreds of thousand miles away. That to me is the worst because I feel like, wow, we're not even giving each other our attention here. We're diverting it. And yet we're spending supposedly quality time together. Well, that's what I love. I'm glad that we didn't have to do that. Yeah. But here you are going into your Second year, you're going to celebrate your second year, and you're not going to be doing it with just the two of you. No. Now you're on this journey, girl. You are bringing an Alessi yes. into this world. No mm-hmm. pressure. <laughs> do you feel any pressure? No. I feel very happy. Oh, thank I God. Do. I I think this experience, at the beginning, it was a little scary. I mean, your first is always a little scary, but it's been it's been beautiful. Yeah. I feel... So blessed, and I can't wait to bring that grandbaby. It's going to be a blessed grandbaby yeah. to have you and my mother-in-law oh. as the grandparents. It's going to be. I'm crying. It's going to be a wonderful. It's going to that baby's going to have a wonderful life, and that yeah. makes me so excited. Yeah. So I'm just happy. Oh my gosh, uh, we're having to change our our stinking employee manual around here because we used <laughs> to say nobody can bring babies into the church office. And here we all are with all these babies that we're bringing around this church office. So um, even our nursery, we are like, no, everybody that serves got to put their kids in nursery. And now we can't even get them off the front row. (laughs) We want baby G with us. (laughs) You know, we've always tried to say this about our business, our work environment. We've always said of our staff, guys, if your family is sacrificing with you, There should be certain liberties giving to them. And if you look at, especially the younger ones, now now as they get older, they start developing friends around here. It's not an issue Mm -hmm. because when staff gets here at 7, 30, 8 o'clock, whoever's here with their children first thing in the morning, they're looking to go hang out with their friends. Mm -hmm. But when they're so small, like I look at little Gianni, Gianna, and I know that's either going to be with little or uh, we just you know, announced the names. <laughs> no, these are just names that I have in my heart that I'm praying <laughs> for. Um, uh, we can delete that part of this. <laughs> if that's not to be put out there yet. Anyhow, um, and be a boy, by the way. Not, yes. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> yes. Okay. So the point being, they will get here as an infant, eight o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. And go through two services that keeps them here till almost 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the afternoon. That's a long stretch for any volunteer child or staff child. So when they're so small that first year, 
before they start walking and everything. It's it's so unfair to keep pushing them from arm to arm, person to person, trying to carry them and so forth. So, you know, we try our best to be as lenient as possible, understanding as possible, because at least, look, get them in one service next door in the nursery. Mm -hmm. But the other service is kind of unfair to leave them there for that two-hour stretch. It's hard on you for feeding and for all those things that yeah. come into it. Well, it was so much easier for us to talk about it and say, you know, other couples should do this. Yeah. Until we started holding our niece and we're like, oh, would we? she's going to be in a room with people we know and trust. People we train, she's going to be in a room with them for four hours. It was yeah. like, it, it, it gave us perspective. Yeah, it's not easy. You have a pooch. Yes, I do. <laughs> you do. I do. Is there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and by the way, that was one of the things, one of the ways you knew you were pregnant was because every day you jump on the scale and how old, how, how, I, old, how heavy were you? I Excuse was me, how six, light are you? <laughs> I was six pounds heavier than usual. And my pants were fitting a little tight and I had no idea what was going on. And one evening I was so hungry. I had a full Chick-fil-A sandwich <laughs> and then I, and fries. And then I was still hungry. I had nuggets. And I remember saying, there's something going on with me because wow. I, don't eat that much. And my pants are fitting really tight. And when I went away to myself, I was six pounds heavier and I knew, okay. Okay. But wait, no, the happening. funny thing is you're like 98 pounds every morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and finally you tipped the scales over a hundred. Yeah. Just triple digits. Oh my God. Triple digits. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, yeah, we got an eating program for the rest of us that we have yeah. to stay close to. Yeah. Well, uh, your first year and now you're moving into your second complete year of marriage and your beautiful baby that you're going to be bringing into the world and carrying the Alessi name, of course, gives us great pride. Mm -hmm. No pressure. We we don't want you to feel pressured by that at all. Uh, Chris, we know you're doing your manly part and <laughs> you are shooting bullets and super proud of you. This is going to be fun. Uh, Y'all are a great couple. I'm glad that we can work together. You're doing a great job working Thank with you. us, not for Thank us, you. with us, Rochelle. Yes. I is that it. tough? Um, I think I've learned a lot. Yeah. And the great thing is that the church, we work hard. <laughs> and <laughs> I've learned you have to work hard. Yeah. You have to do it. But I love it. They I don't, think it's the, people don't know that. They don't know the work level and load and responsibility. And we got a great staff and all of y'all working together, especially during these holidays. So crazy, all that's going on. Well, anything you want to say before we depart, Christopher? Uh, just do things God's way. Yeah. His way is so much better. That's so true. Well, thank you for joining us for another episode of The Family Business with the Alessis because family is everybody's business. And um, hey, if you've enjoyed this, why don't you share it with maybe another young couple that you know that may need some assistance and help and encouragement as they are in their first year or two of marriage, and especially if they're expecting or believing for a child to come their way. This is proof, doing it right. You'll be amazed at how God blesses. So thank you for joining us and we hope you were encouraged today. Hey there, if you enjoyed this episode of the Family Business Podcast with the Alessis, then you'll wanna know we've got more insight, more encouragement, more great conversations that we can have on Sundays and even some surprises coming your way. So you wanna make sure you subscribe to our channel and watch one of these next videos here next because remember, family is everybody's business.